And so I was on the way there thinking about, okay, how am I going to prove mathematically the existence of God? And I immediately turned to this notion of zero to the power of zero. Nothing to the power of nothing equals everything. And it implied immediately a divine creator. It implies immediately an intelligence behind all that is. And we all think that prime numbers are random. Well, in 2018, I discovered that prime numbers were not random at all. That they're subject to a pattern, and that pattern is tied to the number 24. Because every prime number above 5 into infinity, when you square it, becomes a multiple of 24 plus 1, without exception. So we know the prime numbers, 5 and 7. So 5 times 5 equals 25, and that's 1 times 24 plus 1. 7 times 7, the next prime number is 49, that's 2 times 24 plus 1. Right? 11 times 11 is 121, that's 5 times 24 plus 1. And 13 times 13 is 169, and that's 7 times 24 plus 1. You seeing the pattern? Now why don't we learn this in school? Because our educational system is designed not to seek or look for patterns. Because that implies a creator. And once we believe that there must be a creator, then everything starts to get a little bit strange in the world. As we kind of look at the world, all the things that we think are entropy, maybe entropy, which is supposed to mean randomness, is not really randomness at all. Maybe entropy is just the word that we use to describe our ignorance when our knowledge ends and our ignorance begins. We think that it's not pattern, but we don't know enough. And actually, mankind has had a progressive stage of constantly pushing the boundary further and further away from itself. Originally, we didn't know that a diameter had a relationship to a circumference. And finally, we came up with the notion that 22 over 7 might actually be the value that shows that relationship between the diameter and the circumference of a circle. But then, as time went by, we got more sophisticated. We realized that 22 over 7 wasn't quite accurate enough, and maybe it should be 355 divided by 113. That gives us 3.1415926. So now we have six decimal digits of accuracy. Each time we learn more, we push the boundary out of what we thought was unpatterned and realize that there was an inherent pattern in fact. I spend my time looking for patterns because this language of mathematics is the language of the universe. It is the Codex Universalis. As we look at the world around us, we often see comments from people like Louis Pasteur who said, if you study a little science, you go farther from God, but if you study a lot of science, you come nearer to Him. Even Carl Jung said, behind everything that we perceive as disorder and chaos is actually a hidden order. That hidden order is ours to find. The glory of God is to hide things, and the glory of mankind is to find those things. We're merely just finding the notion of ourselves, of why we're here on this life journey, to realize that we are not alone, and that there is no true separation between science and spirituality. In fact, if we go back and look throughout history, every major advance in science has been brought to us by people who were very spiritually minded. We don't have to go far to look for people like Kepler or Galileo, who presented in this very room. And we also don't have to go far to see that these polymaths were not bound by any one discipline because they were simply looking for this language or this codex of universalis. It's such a beautiful thing when we can start to realize the divinity we have within ourselves. The notion also that geometry is so perfectly orderly. There's nothing about geometry that is not perfection, literal perfection. This morning I had the opportunity to visit the Vatican Library. 
And the first thing that I noticed in this long, beautiful hall that was shaped like a book that's open is the spine of the book. The spine of the book were seven columns. The seven columns were started with Adam painted on the side of it. This was done at the time the Vatican Library was created, which was during Pope Sixtus V. So you have Adam, and then the next person you see is Abraham. The first thing you see Abraham holding is a compass and a straight edge. The compass of the square. The divine manifestation of the act of thinking and feeling and working and emulating the great architect, the designer of it all. But we don't know of Abraham. We think of Abraham as someone that had a bad family plan. Didn't work out as estate planning very well at all. But actually, he's depicted on the walls in this esteemed place, known the world over as a geometry. As we said, look against the other pillars that take you all the way to Jesus at the very end, which is the Alpha Omega. You see Pythagoras listed. The second pillar, after Abraham, in fact, we were the third pillar, actually, was Hermes, Trace of Justice. This is in the Vatican. Each pillar representing a different aspect of humanity moving through the spine of our evolution. Almost as if with seven pillars to represent each of the energetic centers that we find that are often known in the Vedic philosophies as the chakra system. To me, this is yet another example of how the world has been separated, just as the Vatican Library, on one side representing faith and the other side representing culture. The spine of this book that lays open on our table of experience are the prophets, the polymaths, who brought to us the translation from faith to culture. And what is culture but collective personality? We live in an age right now where everyone is looking for meaning. And yet meaning is hidden all around us. We have only to look for it. The glory of God is to hide things so that they can be found. Mathematics can be broken down into arithmetic and geometry, but beyond that we even have music. Music is also mathematics. The left Temporal lobe is where we process mathematics. The right temporal lobe, in the exact opposite position, like a mirrored position of our brain, is where we process music. It could be said then that mathematics is simply the music that we experience in the abstract form. It could also be said that geometry that sits right in the center of our brains is simply the music we experience with our eyes. Now we can take this analogy and expand it to include cosmology. Now we've included the entire quadrivium. Arithmetic, number in itself, number in abstract. Geometry, number in space. Number in time is music, and number in space-time is cosmology. Look around you. The world is telling us everywhere, the universe is telling us everywhere, the signature of the divine. The sun, if I was going to make a perfect time system, wouldn't you probably think about doing it in a way that's going to match somehow the diameter or maybe the circumference of the sun as we go around it? We have 86,400 seconds in one day. The diameter of the sun is 864,000 miles. Now you could say, is this all coincidence? I don't believe in coincidence anymore. Coincidence is the thing that we call things when we're not yet understanding and comprehending the divine patterns that are all around us that are encrypted for us to find when we find love in our hearts rather than judgment. Thank you very much.